Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. The government of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has had an eventful start as he is tasked with the responsibility to stabilize the economy, which is in dire need of major boost. Tinubu's ascension to the leadership of Nigeria came at a time of crisis, notably a high rate of unemployment, inflation and insecurity. The biggest ripples trailing the new political dispensation in Nigeria were caused by the repercussions of terminating full subsidies that had kept pump prices low throughout the country for a long time. As the fallout of removing subsidies took a toll on citizens, Tinubu's government lined up a series of social policies aimed at reducing the hardship that struck households nationwide. Many have praised his initiative, while others have asked how sustainable it will be. Also, Tinubu's decision to ban the parallel foreign currency exchange market and devaluate the Naira to close the gap between official and open market rates was deemed to be a step in the right direction. There is no doubt that a lot has happened since President Tinubu took over in May. Well, joining us now on The Morning Show, to discuss his time in office so far and the state of the nation is Tanko Yakasai, an elder statesman. Good morning, sir, and welcome to the morning show. Good morning to you and everybody there. Good morning, Good sir. Good morning. Good morning. Well, all right. Well, last week you were on another program here on Arise News uh, during the Independence Day celebration where you said that uh, the percentage of Nigerians who do not believe in national unity is insignificant. While some uh, may agree with you, others will disagree because, of course, the uh, current state of the nation as uh, hardship is now the order of the day with uh, the subsidy removal, high rate of unemployment, inflation and insecurity. Many young people are now trying to jackba. I'm sure you are familiar with that uh, word, jackba, or even try to break away from Nigeria. Uh, so while I understand uh, the context at which you uh, spoke about national unity during the uh, Independence Day celebration, I'd like for you to elaborate your point uh, in the face of uh, the prevailing economic hardship. Well, um you know, economic hardship is part of life in Nigeria or in any other country, depending on the current situation. Uh, presently, we have President Tinubu, who has started very, very well, one of the most experienced politicians in Nigeria. Don't forget that before becoming the president of Nigeria, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu was a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And later on, he became a governor of number one state, which is Lagos. Whoever rules Lagos can rule Nigeria without any difficulty. He ruled Lagos for two terms consecutively, and now is elevated to be the president of Nigeria. So um, if, if, if you are talking about Tinubu, we are talking of a politician with sufficient experience in Nigeria, being a legislature and now an executive uh, officer, chief executive of the third country. So now um, when we are talking of the economic hardship, in Nigeria or in any country, you must look at the background and see what is the cause of hardship. The problem is that we had a number of policy issues that this country has been bedeviling with for a long time. President Tinubu decided to face this problem head on. And this is the reason why he decided to do things like removal of subsidy and the rest of them. These are things that are not very popular in the country, but they are inevitable because to put the economy of the country in the proper footing, you need to do that. And uh, this is the reason why uh, President Tinubu decided 
to be courageous enough to tackle the problems head on, not to behave like others who are avoiding difficult policies. It is really necessary for a government, for a leader of a government, to be courageous enough to face problems that are being avoided by people because of fear of uh, unpopularity. You do the right thing, whether you are going to be popular or not, because ultimately, when people get the benefit of what you, your policy, you are policy you are uh, operating, you are implementing, they will begin to understand the implication and therefore praise you. Some people, some leaders were praised after they left office. So this is my understanding of the policies uh, President Tinubu is pursuing in order to put the economy of this country in a proper shape. All right, sir. Uh, that's uh, quite a good one. Uh, I'd like to ask you, sir, um, President Tinubu has the largest cabinet in Nigeria ever, uh, 48 ministers. Uh, 20 special advisors are expected to be appointed uh, in full. Um, he has just, uh, the Senate has just confirmed three uh, additional ministers to make up the 48. Uh, some states got more than others. Uh, some people have said that um, it's more of political settlement uh, than, um, you know, uh, uh, having a cabinet that can uh, sort the myriad of problems that Nigeria has. What, in your opinion, uh, should be the focus uh, of the cabinet that Ashwa Jibola Metinubu has put in place, given that you are as good uh, as your team and the president is, is expected to delegate. Ten new ministries have been created or carved out of old ones. But we have 48 people that will assist uh, the president and the vice president in delivering on his mandate. What direction do you think that they should take and where should be the priority areas? Well, the issue of number of ministers or commissioners are absolutely the responsibility of the chief executive. He knows the number of people he requires to help. That's why the Constitution provides for the governor or the president to appoint the number of people as he deemed appropriate to assist him. You know, the ministers, special advisors, special assistants, permanent secretaries are called presidential assistants. They are there to assist the president to implement his program. So the president appointed people according to the desire he has to implement his program. He is appointing people who will help him to implement his program without hitch. It is not for any outsider to tell him how many people he should appoint and who and who should not appoint. Uh, he should appoint it and will not be appointed. But uh, it is the same thing everywhere in the world that heads of government or heads of state appoint ministers according to the need they have, according to their own program, what they want to implement. They are appointing people who help them to implement their program. So this is what Tinibu did. And I don't see anything wrong, anything new in what he did because all over the world, people are doing that according to their, uh, the reality of the situation. Oh, well, while we agree with you, sir, a lot of uh, the criticism is actually coming from the fact of the state of the nation, uh, the, the uh, high inflation and the high cost of living. The, the, the money is, is, that he might be using for his large cabinet could be used um, in other ways. But as we continue to explore the conversation on the state of the nation, uh, let's talk about some of his uh, social policies uh, of the Tinubu administration aimed at reducing uh, the hardship in the nation. Um, the president, in his uh, state broadcast on October 1st, announced that the federal government will begin a cash transfer of 75,000 naira to 15 million vulnerable households at 25,000 naira per month for only three months. 
Um, now, what is your reaction to this method of uh, introducing such palliatives to cushion the effect of uh, subsidy removal? Uh, now, do you applaud the move or do you question its sustainability? When you are talking of amount of money to be allocated either to officials or to ministries, it is the head of government more than anybody else who knows exactly what amount of money he is talking about. To do that, he has to calculate not only the total amount of money that would, require, would be required, but also where to get the money and how to utilize the money. If anybody decided to allocate so much money to so much number of people, he is sure he knows why he is doing it. He can't do it for nothing. Particularly if you are talking of somebody like Tinubu, who was a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a two-term governor of number one state, Lagos, and now a president of Nigeria. He has all the necessary experience and what it takes for him to know what to do and what not to do. I will rather say that uh, I will watch the policy and give it time to see how it will work out. You don't introduce policy today and begin to see it working tomorrow. You need to give it time to tackle one area or the other gradually. You'll be able to, be, uh, uh, to, to tackle problems from different angles of the issues and you'll be able to know how far you are going, where you need to make adjustments, and where you don't need to make adjustments. But I think what he's doing is the right thing, and this is what every good uh, leader should do. All right, I also asked a question about the um, cash transfer and the sort of uh, palliative measure um, that the Tinubu administration has implemented. I was asking if you applaud the mood or you uh, question uh, its sustainability. You didn't mention that to me, but I can tell you that before I was once a commissioner for finance in number two richest state in Nigeria, Kano. At one time, it was next to Lagos in terms of revenue and expenditure. So I was a commissioner for finance for three years in Kano State. So when you are making expenditure, when you are preparing to spend money, you are taking into account the cost and the source of money that you utilize to raise the money you need to implement your policies. I'm sure with his rich background, President Tinubu has all the necessary experience and knows what he's doing. So when he commits himself to a program, it is not out of blue that he's implementing the program. He must have thought about it sufficiently, and I uh, give him time, you will probably begin to understand why he's introducing the program and you'll begin to see the result. Mm. All right, sir. Um, we have since passed the 100-day uh, threshold. Uh, we're now in the fifth month uh, of this new administration. Uh, it is expected uh, that uh, part of what uh, will preoccupy the administration is the preparation towards the uh, next budget uh, that will be presented to the uh, Senate to the National Assembly uh, in December uh, for implementation throughout uh, next year. Uh, what do you think, given your background in terms of you know finance as a former finance commissioner, uh, what do you think should be the preoccupation of uh, the first budget that the Ashwa Jubola Metunubu administration will be planning to present? I did ask you earlier. Uh, about the priority areas that you think his cabinet should focus on. I would like you to take that together with uh, the area of focus that um, 
should, you know, should be the focal point of the appropriation that Ashwaju Bola Metinobu will be presenting uh, later in the year, given the very uh, troubled area, troubled uh, uh, issues that Nigerians are dealing with. Inflation is at the highest uh, at a time that there is no war. Uh, food prices are horrendous, you know, and, and you know, Naira to a dollar is now more than a thousand. Those are key important areas. How do you look at it and what will be your advice uh, as the president and his team uh, will be preparing for their own first budget? But I would like to remind you that Tinubu did not bring inflation to Nigeria. Tinubu inherited inflation. And he's now trying to see from what angle is he going to tackle the problem? When you are going to tackle the problem of funding and spending, you have two issues before you. One, how much do you need? And two, how, from where are you, are you going to get the money? And this is what Tinibu is trying to do. And this is what everybody will do. Because you don't spend money anyhow, even your personal money. You know how much you have in your pocket, you know what you need, and therefore you decide how much out of the money you have in your pocket you can commit to whatever need you want to address and how much you are not prepared to spend. This is what the president is doing. The president, being an experienced person, a governor who ran administration of the richest state in the country, in two terms, one after the other. And the fact that he was elected for the second time as a governor means that people were satisfied with his performance. So I, I, I know that uh, he is handling the problems and he has enough capable hands to help in advising him on what he needs to do and what he needs not to do. We shouldn't rush him. We should also be patient now. Don't let us begin to, tell, uh, to, to decide the fate of a government within a number of days, 100 days, three months, and so on. No, the government has four years tenure. You begin to talk of 100 days out of four years, it's a chicken feed. So let us allow him. He is the man in charge. He knows left, right, and center. And he knows where, from which angle to tackle the problem. And I'm sure he is doing his best. I said it, that he is already an experienced person. And uh, with that experience, he will be well guided as to what he needs to do and how he can get the money to do it. All right, well, let's stay on this uh, issue of budget. Um, we also understand that uh, the Tinubu administration, you know, will, will continue to carry out uh, the massive borrowings of the previous uh, government to fund its budget deficits. You know, despite uh, the declarations uh, that his administration wouldn't be sticking with the past government's uh, controversial policies of debt management. The debt management office has now say, say that they are planning to raise, uh, you know, up to 1.2 trillion in debt through a reissuance of uh, federal government bonds. So now we see in one hand that the present government is trying to deviate uh, from, uh, you know, policies of the past. But in another hand, they are just repeating the mistakes of the past. Now, as a former commissioner of finance, as Steve had alluded, uh, you know, in Kano, I'd like your assessment on this particular issue. Well, when people are looking for debt, they ask people who have the money to give them loan, either banks or individuals. The first thing that people will look at is your ability, your source of income, to pay the loan if you are given to. I'm sure the, the money that the president is looking for in his government is coming from people who have the money to give. 
And the people who have the money to give, don't give money just like dash. They take into consideration your sources of income, how you are going to pay back the money they are going to do, that to give you, and what you are going to do with the money. I think uh, Nigeria should understand that uh, the most important thing is experience in this kind of thing. Somebody who has the experience as a governor and a uh, senator and so on, he has the, both legislative and executive aspect of experience of handling budget and handling finances to know what next to do, what need to do, and what need not to do. I, I, I'm sure uh, the, at the end of the day, you will find that uh, we are doing the right thing. Uh, the president will be doing the right thing. Uh, all right, sir. Um, the opposition is still in court against uh, the president. Uh, there are also issues uh, that are coming out on a daily basis uh, regarding uh, some aspect of his, uh, you know, a previous life, uh, you know, his, his um, credentials and things like that, all apparently going to the Supreme Court. A number of people have said that they are mere distractions and that, you know, uh, they shouldn't be used to uh, distract the president. If he survives the Supreme Court's decision, you know, if the Supreme Court uh, affirms him as a duly elected president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, what will be your advice to him in how to um, unite the country and what sort of legacy do you think that he should seek uh, for his administration, at least for the first term of his administration? Well, in the first place, um, if you look at the number of votes Tinbu got in the percentages he got from all parts of the country, you know that uh, the majority of the people of this country are with him. Certainly, he contested against other people. But uh, he came on top. Nigeria gave him the votes. So um, we, 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 we will uh, um, I'm coming, I'm trying to what is the beginning of the question? Yeah, I, I, I said um, there are issues uh, that, that the opposition is still in court and that there are issues around his credentials, you know, which are things uh, that are... That's right, that's yes. right. All right. Yeah, the court issue. Yes, well, um, you know, I've contested election many times before. And uh, when a matter is in court, the court, the court is subject to say that talking about an issue which is before the court, particularly at the level of Supreme Court, will amount to contempt of court. I, as a, you call me elder statesman, at the age of 98, just two years to clock 100 years, I would certainly not like to be a to appear to be somebody who is not respecting the law of the country. So I'd not like to involve myself in discussing matters that are already before the court. You can ask me other questions, but uh, I'm not prepared to discuss matters yeah. which are before the court will know. Oh, yes, I mean, I, I acknowledge that. I, I just use that as a context. My question actually is that uh, if it's affirmed, uh, by the Supreme Court as, you know, he hopes that he will be affirmed. Uh, how do you think that he should unite the country? And what sort of legacy do you think that he should pursue uh, by the time he, he finally settles down uh, as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? But I think if you deduct from my reply to you that given the number of votes you got, the country is already united in his support. He has all the necessary support. He has the majority of votes. He has the 25% in the number of states as required by the Constitution. So already he has the country united behind him. And uh, if he's lucky that at the Supreme Court he came out on top, the country, the country will continue to support him. 
And uh, since he has the largest number of supporters, uh, I don't see any problem even at that time. All right. Would like to uh, thank you uh, very much for joining us on the morning show and congratulations at 98. You look splendid. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank right. you, sir.